Like I was okay with the pizza one, you know, like, you know, cut back on some of that cheese and a little bit of that milk, but this, like something about this gotta be breaking the law. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You won't escape my <laughs> Cool nerds, how y'all doing? I'm back, you know, I took a little, you know, mental week to myself, uh, a little bit of a break. Uh, I feel like those are good for me just because you know, it's a lot of pressure when you have to like upload throughout the week, edit your own videos, then you got life to deal with. It's just a lot of pressure. And I feel like these little smaller breaks are good for me. And like, I let you, I want to let y'all know what I'm up to. So y'all don't think I'm just being inconsistent again. And you know, I, I, I think I've been doing a good job and I appreciate you guys for acknowledging that as well. Um, but it, it's weird when you do take a break, at least for me, you know, like uh, when you're consistent at the gym, and then like you take a week or two off and then it's like, you feel like you got to reset. I, I just, for YouTube, I feel like I got to like get back in the zone. I was in the zone yesterday. I'm just like, something was off. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a day off again. And then today I'm like, I'm a film, I'm a film. But I was gonna film a different video. And um, before we talk about this video that we're about to film right now, I want to say one thing, uh, a couple people have been saying that I blocked them on Twitter. And for those of you who are OGs on the channel, y'all know my Twitter was hacked. And my Twitter was actually hacked multiple times. So when I got my Twitter back like a few years ago for the, the, this last time uh, I was hacked, I had to block like 60,000 like bot accounts. And within those accounts, some regular accounts got blocked too. So if you are blocked by me, message me or comment on the YouTube comments that your, your Twitter name so I can unblock you. Cause I had to unblock a few people and I felt terrible because they thought I probably hated them, but that's not the case. But anyways, let's talk about this video. So it's come to my attention that we got like a few regulars when it comes to these TikTok struggle meals, you know, and obviously some of them are trolling. Some of them might be like on the borderline troll series and some of them think they're really chefs. But this lady right here thinks she's really cooking something good. I'm coming back, baby. And this lady has shown it before. I think she was on the first Struggle Meals TikTok. She created some like fettuccine chocolate pasta with strawberries and like, it, like, it didn't look that bad, but like, it was just like, eh. I'll pass. And out of all the struggle meal TikToks, that was probably one of the most appetizing looking ones. But, but she done disrespected macaroni and cheese one too many times. Watch when you cut into this dumbass macaroni. And if you go to her page, her videos get a lot of views. But when it comes to the macaroni and cheese videos, those get the most because people feel disrespected and know this ain't it. So we're gonna watch these videos right now. But before we do, you already know what to do. Smack that like button, shove the notifications on. Let's get it. What's this spicy penne alla vodka? And let's try the mac hack on it. Add one pound of penne to a baking dish, then add five to six cups of liquid. Today, I'm trying out tomato juice, water, and vodka. Liquid. Kind of a lot of vodka. And we are continuing with the vodka. All right, all right, there's kids in here. Oh, and I forgot I added some heavy cream as well because I like my penne alla vodka extra creamy. Add it's a, a soup. nice healthy pinch of salt and give it a good stir. Once that's all combined, squirt three, four, hell, maybe even five tablespoons of tomato paste over top. Then I added a nice healthy scoop of Calabrian chili pepper paste to the center, along with some fresh cracked pepper. Bake this in the oven at 350 for about 55 minutes, taking it out halfway through to give it a good stir. When it comes out, just stir it up and you're done. Next time I'm gonna leave out the tomato juice, but this tastes amazing, albeit heavy handed on the vodka. See, like, I feel like her end results never look like too bad. Like it, it don't, it looks a little, you know, this is, I mean, it looks a lot watery. There's a lot of, a lot of watery. <laughs> what am I saying? It looks, it just looks watery. Like, but I, I don't know how I feel about all that, like liquid in my pasta. Like, and I know some people do the whole, like where they want the al dente pasta and whatnot, but I like to boil my noodles uh, prior to like actually putting the sauces and what whatnot in there and like, only she what she put a pinch of salt in that joint uh, you know this one gets this one gets a, a slight pass but i don't know man 
I don't know. My biggest concern is that, yeah, she used this, like, great value made in Italy, like, V8 juice, but then she kept pouring this, like, vodka in there. I know there, there's some sauces that have vodka and whatever, but this old cheap-looking gallon of, like, whatever vodka, and then all that cream in there, like, bro, I just can't go. Like, I'll be dead afterwards. Sitting on the toilet. Sitting on the toilet. And if you go back to the beginning, she says this is going to be spicy. Like, that's that was the first word of the title. But, like, you added a pinch of salt and, like, a dab of chili paste, and the rest of it's, like, 99% vodka, cream, and then whatever V8 juice that was. That ain't spicy, baby. If you think that's spicy, you in for a rude awakening when you try some real spicy pasta. <laughs> Let's make baked feta pasta mac and cheese. Pepperoni pizza style. Add a block of feta and a log of goat cheese to the center of a casserole dish. Then add a pound of dry elbow macaroni, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese, a few cloves of garlic, half a grated onion, and about five cups of milk. Then make sure you season with salt. Yes, it's a seasoning. Give that pasta cheese milk mixture a good stir to mix it all up. Then you're gonna top the whole thing with tomato sauce. Add some fresh cracked black pepper, then pop in a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes. About halfway through cooking, I gave the outside of it a good stir just so the pasta wouldn't stick to the side of the casserole dish. When it comes out, mix everything up to combine, then add some fresh oregano. Top with more shredded mozzarella cheese and pepperoni. Then pop back in the oven on a low rack to broil for about five more minutes. And your pizza mac and cheese is done. Where else am I going to go with this? She got a big old mouth, bro. That's probably about the only good thing about this mac and cheese. It actually looks pretty fire for the end product, but like just goat cheese. And she said salt was seasoning. Like you got, come on, bro. We, we got to do more than that. Like, yeah, you got the oregano because of the pizza. Like, I, I get it. I get it. Like, I feel like she has the right idea, but she's executing it really bad. And like I said before, her end products look really good, but when you see this whole process of her pouring a gallon of milk into this already heavy dairy pizza macaroni and cheese, it's like, bro, my bubble guts are starting and I haven't even ate it yet. At this point, the pasta is a weapon. You, you go to war with this and you can just throw it at somebody and they just spontaneously combust. And this is super small. I guess you can use like any type of noodle you want, but why she tell us to use elbow macaroni and then use a completely different type of noodle? And you heard how she reiterated that salt was a seasoning because you know she began flamed in the comments because that little pinch of salt is not seasoning. You got 10 gallons of cow titty juice in there, but that little pinch of salt is supposed to make a difference. It's time for another mac and cheese hack. And this time, we're doing it cheeseburger style. Add eight ounce blocks of American and cheddar cheeses to the center of a baking dish. Then add one pound of pasta, I'm using small shells, and six cups of the liquid of your choice. I'm using mostly whole milk and bone broth today. Season liberally with salt and give the outside a good stir. Now we're going to add our special sauce ingredients. Squirt a few tablespoons of mayo, a couple tablespoons oh, no. each of ketchup and sweet pickle relish. Add a little drizzle of white vinegar. And then, of course, we're going to go across the top with some freshly cracked black pepper. Then stick in a 350 degree oven for 55 minutes, taking it out halfway to stir around the edges. Once it comes out, you know the drill. Stir it all up until the cheese is completely combined. Finally, the cheeseburger part. Add one pound of cooked ground beef and stir to combine, then top with shredded lettuce, some diced onion, some halved cherry tomatoes, and sesame seeds. And don't worry, I am still not done with this hack. Y'all. <laughs> like, I was okay with the pizza one, you know, like, you know, cut back on some of that cheese and a little bit of that milk, but this... Like something about this gotta be breaking the law. Like we gotta find something like a loophole. Like we gotta get her arrested immediately. Police! Help! Police! Help! This was one of those dishes where it started off like one of her normal pasta dishes. Too much juice, milk, whatever, ch chicken broth or whatever broth she was using. Like, and then towards the end, it was it was a hate crime. This was a hate crime versus Hamburger Helper. Like she went on the street and it was like, stop Hamburger Helper hate. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. You know, she had her little trademark block of cheese with the noodles around it. Then she poured her gallon of milk or six gallons of milk and then uh, chicken broth or something. But she was like, you know what? Forget all that. Add the juice of your choice. You, you can't be telling people that when they're trying to learn stuff. Like, because if I'm doing that, it's gonna be Kool-Aid and booty juice. Help me try to make this abomination, please. Get out. Correction, it was bone broth, because that makes it so much better. But, you know, this is where it goes downhill even more so than usual with her pasta dishes, because she started adding condiments. 
like ketchup packets and mayo and and relish relish in my macaroni and cheese this is i don't care this is a hate crime i don't care and then after that's all said and done she bakes it and then she stirs it and it looks like all right you know but we still know what's inside of it but then she starts adding more nonsense. The underlying issue with all her pasta is that how much milk she's using, bro. Like this is not even pasta anymore, this is soup. Like you don't just go around having a cup of milk and relish, a cup of milk and ketchup, a cup of milk and mayo. Like what are you doing, bro? Stop adding so much milk in here. Like this is disgusting. <laughs> so not only is she disrespecting mac and cheese, she's disrespecting hamburger helper. And you know what? I just can't live by that. Help me. Let's make another mac and cheese hack. But this time, let's make it with sriracha chicken and Velveeta. Add three quarters of a large block of Velveeta to the center of a baking dish. Then add one pound of small pasta, not the kind that I used, to the outside of the baking dish, along with six cups of whole milk, a healthy pinch of salt, a dozen cloves of minced garlic, and a quarter cup of sriracha. Top with some fresh cracked pepper, then pop in the oven at 350 degrees for 55 minutes. When it comes out, you know the drill. Mix it all up till that cheese and milk becomes one. Once your mac and cheese is mixed, you can go ahead and add a big handful of shredded rotisserie chicken another great hack so you don't even have to cook your own chicken give that a good stir to combine then you're going to add some nice thick shavings of parmigiano reggiano all over the top this is so good guys it's actually a recreation of one of my favorite hometown dishes so saucy so cheesy and so delicious well what should i do with this hack next I never hated somebody's face more so much when they eat, bro. <laughs> bro! Like, why'd you get the plate so close to her face or the uh, casserole bowl? Like, <laughs> but like, it, it's, do you see how liquidy the pasta is? It's not mac and cheese, bro. This is it's not mac and cheese. This is whatever she's created, but it's not mac and cheese. Like, and I feel like, if you did it differently, like this would smack, like this would bang, right? Like rotisserie chicken goes fire in a lot of stuff. And, and, and with the, you know, sriracha sauce and whatever, I know, you know, cause see people like chicken in their mac and cheese or their pastas and like, you know, seafood pasta hits too. A lot, a lot of people don't like seafood pasta, but I do. And it's just like how she's doing this, bro. It's making me angry. And, and like all these like, you know, content create, they'd be so uppity and stuff like, you know, so excited. And that's good. Like you got positive attitude, but this is garbage. All stop. No, like, and I know she's, she's probably like, I don't consider her a professional chef. I don't think she's a professional chef, but like, yeah, they just, she just be throwing stuff in there. Like just pulling ingredients out her butt and like, let's just make this today. Sriracha chicken, macaroni and cheese. That's not really macaroni and cheese. Like. I just, I don't know. Like, I want somebody to recreate this. Like, we might have to, we might have to do a series where we try to recreate this, but without 20 gallons of cow titty milk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, th that's what we should do. Cause like, I like to make my macaroni and cheese my way, but like, hey, let's, let's try to make it a different way. We might have to, we might have to do this cooking with fresh show earlier. Let me, this got me thinking. Let's make baked feta pasta, mac and cheese, buffalo chicken style. Add a block of feta and a block of cream cheese to the center of a baking dish. Then add a pound of dry elbow macaroni, two and a half to three cups of shredded cheddar cheese, and six cups of milk. Then add a few tablespoons of minced garlic, a lot of salt, guys, a few really good pinches. Then kind of give that outside part a stir to combine. Next, add about a half a cup or so of your favorite buffalo sauce to the top of the dish. Then crack some fresh black pepper over the top and put in a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes. I feel like I have perfected this method. The feta was so creamy, so was the cream cheese. The pasta was perfectly cooked. There was the perfect amount of liquid. Make sure you test at this point for any extra seasoning. I added plenty of salt though, so I was good. Then I just had bought a rotisserie chicken, shredded some up and added it in. So easy and so friggin' good, guys. What am I gonna do with this hack next? This is basically what she did on the last macaroni and cheese. And she did the she did red hot this time. I don't even know what she used last time, but the or the Frank's red hot. And uh I, I don't know. It, it's just like I want I wanna like these dishes. I really do. I, I really wanna like these dishes, but like I don't know how I feel about like, you know, because if you if you pour a certain sauce that, you know, obviously let, let me start over. When you get mac and cheese, you know it's going to be cheesy pasta, creamy pasta, like blah, blah, depending on how you make it, right? But if you add one of these ingredients, that could just kill the entire dish, and you just wasted 
all your time doing this because you got to bake it, which she said, you know, takes 50 minutes or so, depending on how like you, you want the edges, if you want crispy or not. But you you add one of these dishes, like the on the last couple ones, she where she added relish. I don't want relish in my macaroni and cheese. Like what, bro? Chill. Like I understand adding stuff to macaroni and cheese to like hype it up and stuff like that. Get it like, but if if you're making mac and cheese, uh, normally you you don't need much more because I think when you get mac and cheese at Thanksgiving, right? You you get the baked mac and cheese. The baked mac and cheese hit that sweet potatoes. It, 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 that's one of the best combinations ever. Like I remember we had a sweet potato uh, struggle meal thing that I showed on here, but it, to me that's not a struggle meal because when those things hit, it's fire. But Certain things with mac and cheese, uh, we need to chill. But like I said, if this was prepared in a different way, I feel like this would smack. But I'm telling y'all, don't don't let me get this cooking with fresh show. You know what I'm saying? We do this early, we might have to have a whole new series. Like a Taco Bell gordita or something. Okay. Mac and cheese taco gordita. <laughs> Why is she eating like that? Ew. Why are you so close to the camera, bro? Bro, she... She got a punchable face. <laughs> Let me stop, bro. This is not even how to make some. This is just watch me ASMR eat in the camera. If you don't get your old Lord of the Rings face ass up out of the camera, bro. <laughs> she making me mad, bro. She made this TikTok to eat a, a fake Taco Bell macaroni and cheese gordita crunch wrap, or whatever it's called, <laughs> in the camera. Bro, I'm a, I'm a, man, and these begin views, bro. Watch me, watch me eat a taco in front of the camera that close. Y'all gonna be like, this man. You know, y'all gonna see my pores and stuff. <laughs> bro, wipe your face. I'm getting mad, bro. She, she, she just. Who is this chick? Let's make baked feta pasta, mac and cheese, and let's make it spanakopita style. Add Wait, what? What did she say? Hold up. Let's start that over. Hold on. She said what? Let's make baked feta pasta, mac and cheese, and let's make it spanakopita style. Add two blocks. Bro, how are you going to say you're going to make a certain style while pouring these loud noodles? I can't hear you. She said noodles just pouring out like Uzis. The feta to the center of a casserole dish. Then pour in a pound of dry macaroni or your small pasta of choice along with four cups of half and half and two cups of water. Add a nice size sprinkle of kosher salt, then give it a little bit of a stir. Next, drizzle your feta with some extra virgin olive oil and crack some fresh black pepper over top. Then pop in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. When it comes out, you know the drill. Break up the feta and start mixing everything together. I only added four cups of liquid before I put it in the oven and I needed to add more, so that's why I told you to add six. Add two cups of Parmesan cheese now, or you can add it at the beginning phase as well. Give that a stir, then add a bunch of spinach. You can add fresh or frozen, just make sure frozen is well drained and warmed up. Next, add your filo dough topping. I will show you how to do this in another video. Then just break in and enjoy. Where else can I take this trend? Once again, too much leche. You're, you're doing too much milk, like, stop, okay? Spinach and my macaroni and cheese, like, I feel like spinach really doesn't have a taste, so it's like, whatever, but it's like, I don't wanna be chewing on spinach while I'm eating uh, my mac and cheese. And then, what did she add on that? She said, like, fila dough? Like, I, I don't know what that is, so that's, you know. Some people like breadcrumbs on their pasta or their uh, mac and cheese, uh, some people don't. I don't mind it, I don't mind like a little crunch to mine, but like, if you bake it, like, you get that crunch anyway if you cook it long enough, but, I thought that was that to me. I thought that was a, a pot pie top, and like she had cut it off and just threw it on top. But this is I don't know, y'all. She just she just missing it every time for me. Every time, like I said, like you, you could have held back on some of these ingredients, and the pasta or the mac and cheese would have came out like really good, to be honest, you know. And her 
finished product always looks like pretty decent you know her face in the camera while she eating trash but like other than that like pasta looks pretty decent but like once you we figure out all these ingredients i know i've said that multiple times it's like bro no this is not what's hot in the streets in 2021 all right, y'all, so the next one's not her, but she was tagged in it as inspiration. So I want y'all to see what other people's baked mac and cheese looks like. Like, she didn't really add anything crazy to this one, but I want y'all to see what people considered baked mac and cheese, which in a black household wouldn't fly. All right, so we let, let's just watch this. Baked mac and cheese is the new viral baked feta pasta, and today we're making it. Let's go. Add a block of cheddar to a baking dish, then we add the elbow macaroni, cream, water, shredded cheese, salt, and pepper, and we bake. We remove the mac and cheese halfway, and we mix it all together, and then we bake for the remaining time. And seriously, that is it. You can find the full recipe on my Instagram website and YouTube. Don't forget to follow me for more recipes. Enjoy. All right. And y'all, y'all know I love baked mac and cheese. I really do. But like your 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 macaroni and cheese end result looking like ashy Larry. It's dry. It's dry. It's disrespectfully dry. It is ashy. Like you need to put some gold bond on all those elbows. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not just your your elbows, the elbow macaroni, because this is dry. The thing with baked mac and cheese is this it's supposed to be a little bit gourmet, you know, a little bit uh, a little bit high class compared to craft mac and cheese. And yo. Yo, baked mac and cheese looking like, you know, like the cousin that no one talked to from Kraft, you know. So if your baked mac and cheese looking like this, you need to just get one of those little one minute cups of Kraft and eat that. The thing with baked mac and cheese is that there's a saying when it comes to good baked mac and cheese. The, the whole point of this process at the end, the result is that when you hit that spoon or whatever you're, you're using to get the mac and cheese out, if it sounds like good coochie, sorry for some audience, you may not want to hear this, but if it sounds like good coochie, then that macaroni cheese is probably hitting. But their baked mac and cheese, <laughs> bro, their baked mac and cheese look like it came off the antique road show and they just blew the dust off of it. All right, y'all, before we jump into the next one, uh, I'm probably gonna have to change the music to it because of I think it's gonna be copyright, you know, all that stuff. And I, you know, I'm not trying to deal with all that. So I'm gonna change the music. But uh, this next one is described as a macaroni and cheese creme brulee. And what? Like, just watch. Now, I'm all about like the sweet and savory mix and stuff, but like sugar on top of macaroni and cheese, like I've heard of people putting sugar in their spaghetti because it helps with the acidity and like people like people like spaghetti and sometimes the acidity from the tomatoes hurts their stomach or whatever, or people just like sugar in their spaghetti sauce, but sugar on top of my macaroni and cheese. I'm not about that life. The one thing about her like macaroni and cheese or any of her dishes for the most part, I would try. Would I make them like this? No. Would I make them like like my own way? Yes. But like, I don't know if I would even attempt to make a creme brulee macaroni and cheese. Like, like what is that? What do you is that dessert or is that like you know, a side dish or is that dinner? Like what is what is that? But in reality, this lady wakes up and chooses violence every day. Like she just wakes up and she's like, "What's the theme today?" You know, <laughs> is it dessert? Is it hamburger? Is it is it pizza? Like she's like, "I'm just gonna disrespect and break the internet every day and just make the most messed up macaroni and cheese y'all can think of." So yesterday I wrote in the community post that I saw something that made me mad, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, like you know what made you mad?" Like they're thinking it's something personal. No. I saw this lady's post on Twitter and I was like, there's no way this is a real thing. There's no way this is a real thing. But yes, she created this abomination. And if I got to see it 
y'all got to see it. And I'm sorry, cool nerds, but if I get disrespected, y'all get, get disrespected with me because she made this. And, and, and she, this is by far, out of all her macaroni and cheese dishes, the worst one to me. The worst one. And if you do this with your mac and cheese, block me because we can't be cool. You like unsub if you make your macaroni and cheese like this. You might as well I can I I can't be seeing eye to eye with anybody that does this with their macaroni and cheese. Just watch. Just <laughs> you know. I'm angry because I've watched this video, but I'm I'm gonna watch it again with y'all. I'm gonna watch it again with y'all. It's time for another mac and cheese hack. And this time we're doing it tuna melt style. Add a six ounce block each of extra sharp cheddar and American cheese to the center of a casserole dish. Then add one pound of dry shell pasta, two and three quarter cups each of bone broth and whole milk, 12 ounces of canned tuna, 10 ounces of cottage cheese blended up. And of course, you're going to want to season the whole thing with some kosher salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Move the noodles around just a little bit to loosen them up. Then stick in a 350 degree oven for 55 minutes, taking it out halfway to stir the outside edges. Once it's out, you know the drill. Mix everything up until it's fully combined. At this point, I decided I wanted to add some celery seed and some paprika, you know, for you guys. And for color, I think it looks nice. Check for seasoning, then top the whole thing with thinly sliced fresh tomatoes and crushed Ritz crackers. No joke, this is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I loved it. Where else am I going with this? She said, where else am I going with this? In the words of the world star bus driver, you going to jail now. <laughs> Are you? She lost me. I don't even know where, but definitely lost me at the cans of tuna in my macaroni and cheese or her macaroni and cheese. It's not mine, but like, <laughs> bro. Absolutely not. And I, you know, I heard like tuna melts and whatever, but like, what? Canned tuna and macaroni and cheese? Like, I I get seafood mac and cheese, but this, I ain't trying to have like no star kiss, you know, fish of the sea, whatever that's called, like tuna and my macaroni and cheese. Like, this physically upset me. Like, I woke up in the morning and I was like punching the air. And y'all see how she put seasoning in this one because I don't want to say the word because I might get demonetized for it, but I will say influence into putting seasoning in her pasta because she don't be putting none in any of her pasta except for like a little bit of pepper and some uh, uh, salt. But <laughs> she put seasoning in probably the worst one she's made so far. So we got her usual, you know, her usual, you know, the bone broth, the milk, like whatever. We're not going to talk about those. But the tuna and cottage cheese combo some that what is that like something no this is a crime against humanity like like she got to be like public enemy number one somewhere she she got to be making these in a bunker somewhere like hiding from satellites because you make this like the fbi should be at your swat should be at your house immediately and y'all see what she topped it off with crackers <laughs> If you know, you know. Are all nerds as good as you? <laughs>